So the more that I use AMD hardware on Linux, the more that I appreciate what AMD has done for Linux. Now, this isn't to say that everything AMD does is perfect or everything NVIDIA does is uh, terrible because, for example, just look at the 7800 XT. It's a whole generation in front of the 6800 XT, yet it performs more or less the same. And AMD's response to this critique is, well, the 7800 XT is really supposed to compete with the 6800 uh non-XT graphics card and this is uh this is just a strange comment and then you have Nvidia and I think that this started probably after they saw what happened with the like 1080 Ti but they kind of make their products obsolete from the beginning to force you to upgrade and at the same time they uh, make the prices outrageous you know if you take the 3080 I think it came with maybe between 8 and 12 gigs of RAM. And now 8 gigs of RAM is, is obsolete, or it's becoming obsolete very soon. So either NVIDIA made a horrible decision, or they're making their products obsolete within a, you know, a certain span of time. But anyway, in this video here, I would just quickly show you how to overclock your AMD graphics card on Linux and this will only work for AMD. I don't know about NVIDIA, if anything exists for NVIDIA to overclock on Linux because I don't own an NVIDIA uh, graphics card and I have not used one in over 10 years, actually. So yeah, there's not much about NVIDIA that I know on Linux here. But anyway, this tool is called uh, LACT and or LOCKED. I don't know how to say it, but it's very straightforward. Uh, it lets you see information about the graphics card, power thermals, uh, gives you fan control, overclocking, the highlight of this, and then some power state configurations. So to begin, we have to first install it, and it gives you directions here on the GitHub page for several different distributions, but we're on Arch Linux, so that's how we're going to do it. So we open our terminal. Type a yes. So it's in the AUR. You have to use uh, a wrapper to make it easier for you, but I guess you could do it manually. But I'm assuming most people have yay installed. Um, so yeah, we just do yes, lacked, and then just follow the prompt here, and it's pretty straightforward, and you'll be installed. Now, one important thing that we have to do is enable the service with this command and the uh, flag of now right because we want this uh, to start now rather than at the next reboot so yeah if you don't do this you will be able to access the lacked GUI but you may not be able to save anything and that's extremely annoying so yeah anyway so let's do a command here so let's open lack so we've got it running and this is how it starts up uh, one important note here is that if you have an APU, your APU may show up here. Specifically, I mean an AMD APU. Uh, and I have the 7700X, so it showed up here. And it confused me for a little bit because I was like, where's my graphics card? What is this? So, uh, yeah, I wasn't really paying attention. But then I realized, oh, that's the code name there. So, yeah, we select with this tab just in case if you have... Um, uh, an APU here, just make sure you're on your real proper graphics card and we can see it loaded up all of this information. Go here, we can see features, um, extensions. So yeah, it's pretty neat. Then we have the overclocking menu here, uh, the thermal and fan uh, control side, then we have software information. So yeah. Now here is the most important menu probably in this whole app. So we've got some stats, the VRAM usage, uh, the core clock speed, the memory uh, uh, speed. We have the GPU voltage, the utilization on the GPU, and the temperature and power usage. So the way overclocking works now 
is kind of a little bit different than it did in the past where you know you would try to increase voltage and and power overall and clock speeds so it's more of a brute force right approach but now it's kind of more of trying to do more with less that's how i view it so the first thing that we have to do here is just max out this slider maxing out the power use of slider doesn't mean that you're going to be at 312 uh constantly what it means is really if it needs to go up there if it needs to max out it will do it but that's it it doesn't mean that it will always do you know um it's best to maintain that it'll just use it when needed so that's the first thing we have to do now here on the performance level i did not change any of this i did not view this as necessary um but if you want to force it to use the highest clocks or the lowest clocks or you want to like specify it you can do that um let's just click that let's see Oh, okay. So these are the options that we've got here. Anyway, yeah, I really don't see it as being very useful, so I don't use this. So you could just leave that as automatic. Now, this is the most important part of this, and it will take some time. So I would start out with the GPU voltage first. So again, overclocking nowadays is different from before you really have to think about it as trying to get more with putting in less so don't just max out every slider and expect okay yeah putting in as much power whatever 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 I should get the most out of it which means maxing out everything no it's not how it works what you really want to do is reduce the voltage as much as you can first and see your cutoff point right and your cutoff point is when uh, your system crashes because that's uh, instability there. So you reduce it by 10, right? So go minus 10. You run uh, a demanding game. You do not run a competitive game like Counter-Strike, Valorant, nothing like that. You want to run a game that is actually pushing your graphics card, right? So take something like The Witcher, uh, God of War, Robocop, Forspoken. You take something that is doing a lot of geometry, a lot of animations, and is pushing the graphics card and always having it at 99% utilization. This is how you really test this. Or you can use, I guess, some sort of benchmarking tool. So, yeah, so first reduce by like 10, uh, run a game, play it for a, little, a while, see if it's stable. Go another 10, play for a while, see if it's stable, another 10, another 10, until it crashes. Then at the point it crashes, increase it by 5, uh, test. If it crashes again, increase it by 5 again. And eventually you will find your perfect spot. You might even be able to do it faster if you go like minus 20, minus 20, minus 20, minus 20, and then you will reach the point where you're crashing. But if you do it minus 10, uh, it's a little bit more precise and... Uh, it may take longer, but you'll find this, the perfect spot faster. So yeah, first do that. Now on the maximum VRAM speed here. From reading online, I've heard people say that uh, this isn't necessary unless you're playing, uh, playing in 4K. I don't uh, plan to use this PC to play 4K. The graphics card itself cannot do 4K. It can only really do 1440p i mean i guess i could use like fsr or something like that to um upscale it but uh you know if i'm playing like counter strike i'm just gonna play on my you know 24 inch monitor i don't feel like it's necessary to play on a big screen you know if i'm playing on a big screen i feel like that's like console territory for me personally but um yeah i don't feel like it's necessary unless i'm playing like an adventure game or something on a big screen i could do that Competitive games can't do that, so for this here, there may not be a point in doing this. And in fact, this memory is already running really fast. So if we overclock it this high, it may start producing errors. But it has error protection sort of built in where it can go back and correct itself. So you may actually see a reduction in performance when you do this. 
I personally did not really see that, so I just maxed it out. But again, it may not be necessary. So this is really up to you. You can choose. And most uh, AMD graphics cards will accept being maxed out again because they have this error correction and they won't crash. So um, yeah, but just keep that in mind that this may not be necessary really to get performance gains. Now here is the uh, second most important uh, configuration, which is the maximum clock speed. So here, after you found your, your minimum undervolt, you then want to find your maximum overclock. So by default, it's maybe 2.4 or something. And you want to keep going by like 20, 30, uh, 50, until you see that you get a crash. So you test that, I don't know, 2.450. Uh, is it stable? OK, increase by another 50, another 50, until it crashes. And then you want to start reducing it by like 10, 15 until you get to the point where it's not crashing. And that's when you know you found your limit. For me, I found that this is my limit here, uh, around 2.610, 2.620. Uh, after that, it just starts to crash. And again, be very careful not to test with a competitive game like Counter-Strike, because although it is, uh, I mean, it is pushing your graphics card, but it's not doing it as much as something like, uh, the Witcher is, where there's a lot of geometry on the screen, a lot of things happening. Uh, so you, it may appear to be stable. For me, I can go to like 2.65, 2.67 while playing Counter-Strike. But this is not a real representation of uh, stability because it's not really pushing it like other games do. Robocop crashed when I was at 2.65, 2.67. Uh, Forspoken crashed, The Witcher crashed. The only game that ran was Counter-Strike. So it just, to me, it really means that Counter-Strike was stable under this, but it wasn't really utilizing everything. Uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind to test with a game that actually stresses your graphics card to the max. Uh, on the minimum VRAM clock, yeah, I didn't really touch this. I don't think it's necessary. This field is actually important, and it's um, important for, I guess, older games. So let's say you have a game that does not require many resources. It doesn't stress your GPU out. Your GPU is just chilling there. You know, it's running at maybe 800 megahertz. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, the game reaches a point where it's a little bit stressful. Then it just jumps up to 1800 or maybe 1500. And it comes back down to 800, 900. It goes back up to 1800. So this jump between frequencies like that may create instability and i saw this in star wars fallen order where the frame pacing was a little bit off and jittery um and increasing the minimum clock speed to like 2000 it really really helped and it smoothed out the game and the game itself that that one in particular has some poor optimization so this made it worse but adjusting it and putting a minimum on the speed here really helped you know keep it uh stable so that's where this will come important and i've heard that having the minimum and maximum have a difference of like 100 200 400 is the best uh for me i found about 200 maybe 400 to work nicely but i guess you can put it uh, between 100 and maybe 500 or something like that. Um, so yeah, that is how you would overclock. And to enter in these values, by the way, I didn't show it. But yeah, you would just type it in or use the plus minus. So let's put it at 2000. And then yeah, click apply and say yes. And then we are saved. We have our configuration saved. Let's put this back to where I had it to 420. Yeah, then hit. Uh, why is it? Uh, oh, that's strange. It kind of rose up for a second. That hasn't happened to me before, but. 
Yeah, I just exited out the menu and it worked. But uh, yeah, that's about it for this video here. It's pretty straightforward. Um, again, just take your time doing this to find the perfect spot for your graphics card. All graphics cards are different. You may try these numbers and perhaps they'll work for you. I don't really know. But um, again, all GPUs are a little bit different, so it may not um, apply. These numbers may not apply to you. You may get better numbers, in fact. So, uh, yeah, it's a little bit sad also. Just a side note that AMD has restricted this, so you can't actually increase the max voltage. I personally feel that uh, because my temps are so low now, if I could just increase the voltage just a little bit, right? I feel like I could get like 2.7 easily on this graphics card. Maybe even more. Maybe even like 2.75. But AMD chose to, you know, I don't know if I would call it, you know, make their product obsolete, but they definitely chose to restrict it, which is a little bit sad. So, yeah, I think that's it for this. And if you appreciate the content, you have a nice new AMD graphics card and you're planning to overclock it and you found this useful, or if you like uh, the great awesome Rin wallpaper, please give a like and a sub because it'd be greatly appreciated.